is Real Ghost Stories Online. Have you ever gone on a ghost tour? Paranormal walking tour? Typically, it's at a famously haunted location. They take you around. They show you different sights and scenes and tell stories. And usually nothing happens that's out of the ordinary, depending on the tour that you go on. But every once in a while, there's a tour that truly, truly delivers the dead to your door. One of those tours that we've heard about many, many times on our program is the Queen Mary. And there are many ghost tours. It's one of my favorite ships to talk about. It's one of my favorite uh, stories that come into us because they're always different. They're always very interesting and intriguing. Some of the best ghost tour stories that, uh, that I think I've ever heard. Well, our next story is one of those. It's another person who went on the ghost ship tour. And they walk away getting their money's worth, as they put it. Take a listen. One October long ago, my nine-year-old son and I accompanied my good friend Chris to Los Angeles. We were there to pick up a travel visa for his upcoming trip abroad. Since the visit to the office was very short, we had extra time to kill before heading back home, a couple hours away. We decided to do something fun, so using his cool GPS system in his rental car, we looked up attractions in the area and saw the Long Beach Aquarium and agreed to go there. As soon as we were inside of the aquarium, I changed my mind about going there as soon as I saw the Queen Mary just across the water. It was a magnificent sight. I'd seen a documentary about the Queen Mary on television, which chronicled its ghostly history. It didn't take much to talk Chris into changing direction and at least stopping by for a quick tour. My son was a little terrified to go there as soon as I mentioned it being haunted, but he would prove to be a good sport in our trip. We parked and headed into the Queen Mary. It was the first ship of that size that I'd ever been on. The Queen Mary was not just a tourist stop, but a hotel. We ventured into the lobby. And we saw a schedule of events. We were there on a Thursday, which was one of the three days of the week that they offer a paranormal shipwalk tour. Got there a little after 4 p.m., and the tour wouldn't start until 8. On a whim, we decided to spend the night there at the Queen Mary and buy tickets to the tour, which were 50 bucks a pop, but well worth the cost. It was a highly detailed tour that lasted a little over two hours. We went to do a little shopping in Long Beach as we were totally unprepared for an overnight stay and grabbed some dinner at Bubba Gump Shrimp Factory. We came back about half past 7 p.m., checked into our room, and waited in the lobby for our host, rather a paranormal host. She was a petite and pretty lady. She'd been a psychic since her near-death experience when she was younger. Since then, she says she's had the ability to communicate with spirits. There are about 15 of us in the group, including the host and her two assistants. My son was the youngest in the group, and there were two teenagers, and the rest of us were adults. We each received a flashlight and compass to carry with us during the tour. Luckily for me, I happened to bring my digital camera, and we started the tour with my son glued to my hip. In one of the first rooms we entered, I had a scene flash in my mind. In this room, I saw a lot of tables like a cafeteria. When the scene passed and I was able to take a good look at the room, it was dark and dusty and crammed with old furniture. It was essentially a large storage room. Within a few moments, Miss Frost explained that the room had been a lunchroom long ago. Yeah, how about that? A small chill ran up my back. This was going to be an awesome tour. I could already tell. A few minutes later, we entered a larger room. It was in this room that you could hear voices saying, Help me. You had to really pay attention to hear it. The voices sounded almost mechanical, and it was difficult to tell where they were coming from. It's kind of creepy, but it didn't make me get chills or anything. Mrs. Frost said that some tours are dull with inactivity, but she said that this night was especially noisy because we could all hear the voices in any place we stood in that large room. A while later, we entered the first class swimming pool area, the hottest place on the ship as far as ghostly activity was concerned. 
If I remember correctly, the young woman was killed in the swimming locker room, which is a vortex to another dimension or something. The other story I more vividly remember is of a little girl named Jackie who drowned in the second-class swimming pool, but preferred to haunt the first-class pool instead. Smart kid. By the way, there is a ghost cam that's on 24-7 in the swimming pool area. On occasion, from my home computer, I can see strange shadows lurking on the cam. It is in the first-class swimming pool area that the meat of my story lies. Now, before I tell you, I have to say that if Agent Scully and Agent Mulder had a daughter, then it would probably be me. I love to believe in the paranormal, but I tend to find rational explanations for the unknown because I like to believe that I'm a level-headed person. Now, with my story, Mrs. Foster, the guide, brought along a couple of divining rods, like what someone would use to search for underground water. She asked for a volunteer, and no one offered. Oh, what the heck, so I stepped up. I had no idea what she was going to do until after I had taken the divining rods from her. She showed me how to hold the rods on my hands, and I stood there for her instructions. She told the group that she was going to call Jackie, who was a very playful spirit. Oh boy, I didn't expect this, but I thought I'd be a good sport and play along. Everyone was quiet, even my son, which was very unlike him. I held onto the rods and waited for something to happen. As Mrs. Foster called out to Jackie, nothing happened. I must have held those rods for a good couple of minutes before I felt a tingle. It was just a slight tingle, and it made the divining rods turn slightly, but then it went away. Mrs. Foster was going to end the session and move to another room, but my son started calling Jackie. He was excited. He really wanted something to happen, and just then, after he had enthusiastically called out to Jackie several times, the tingle sensation came back. The sensation began to envelop me. It didn't start in any one location. I felt it in my feet, in my stomach, in my head. It's like butterflies fluttering in my body. It was like a gush of warm wind. It was like a blob of energy. It was breathtaking. It was like being lifted in the air. It was the oddest thing I've ever felt. I tried to keep calm in front of everyone, but couldn't help gasp a time or two in complete amazement. I was so involved in this experience that I didn't realize that I had closed my eyes. I opened them and saw the divining rod spinning around my head. I kept my hands as calm as they could be, considering the momentum that was building within me. The experience must have lasted only a couple of minutes. Once it began to subside, the divining rod slowly and eventually stopped. The guide and the group were really surprised at what had happened. Chris was pretty concerned about my reaction. He kept asking me if I was okay. Mrs. Foster had said that not too many people were open enough to have this happen to them. My son was so excited, he was just having fun with it all. I really can't explain what that sensation could have been. I believe in jinns, not ghost spirits of the dead people, but I wasn't scared at all. What I felt was in no way evil. Just before we finished the tour, we had another session with the divining rods at another hot spot. I seem to have added the much-needed spice to our tour because this time there were several volunteers. Unfortunately, the divining rods didn't move for anyone else. However, all our compasses were acting crazy. I took many pictures during the tour, and I noticed a good number of orbs in them. I take one picture twice, one right after the other, and noticed that the first one had no orbs, and the second one had orbs. This was interesting to see, and I freaked out a lot with my friends when I showed them the pictures. However, I've read that a rational explanation for orbs, that they're just dust particles that have reflections on them via the flash of the camera. I don't know. Last but not least... After the tour, we retired to our room. As Chris was kind enough to go fetch a pail of ice for me, my son and I said our prayers together in bed in the corner of the room. A minute or two into our prayers, we heard a loud bang on the inside of the closet. The closet was one of those large, laid out against the wall. The sound was so loud that I expected the closet doors to fly open. It scared the snot out of us and interrupted our prayers. My son let out a slight gasp and I told him to continue with the prayer. We did. And only a few seconds later, we heard another crash. It sounded like someone was throwing an object on top of the dresser filled with small ceramic objects. The top of the dresser was empty of anything that could have made all of that racket. In fact, I laid our clothes neatly folded on it. The dresser was in the other corner of the room near the foot of our bed. Nothing that we could have seen could have made that noise in that location. 
I seriously doubt that we had thin walls and were just hearing our neighbors. We finished our prayers, and a few minutes later, Chris came back. The rest of the night was uneventful, although I had a dream that Jackie was calling me to play with her. The next morning, I took some pictures of our room. There was an orb floating above the head of the bed that my son and I slept on. I think I received my money's worth during that first trip. Want a commercial-free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories? Sign up at Apple Podcasts right now and try it for three days free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories.